Hi, Tim here from Proclaim AV. We're all having a little bit of fun there at the beginning. Um, I know some of you feel that way. When you look at all these audio connectors, you go, what am I supposed to use? What did all these connectors do? And why are there so many? And let's check it out. Now, before we get into connector types, I think it's important for us to talk about different signal types and different signal standards. So let's start with signal standards. The signal standards that we will talk about today are balanced and unbalanced connections. So the balanced connection is used a lot in pro audio, and there are three connections for a balanced channel. There's a plus, a minus, and then there is also a ground. And the advantage of balanced connections is that you can run really long runs of them and not have problems with interference or noise or hum or that kind of thing. They're very good for that. But the unbalanced connection only has two conductors. There's a signal and then there's a ground. And so those work great for short runs, let's say under six feet or so, maybe even three feet is probably better. Um, but they're not so great for long runs. I'll tell a story on myself. When I was a young sound tech, I ran about 40 feet of unbalanced mic cable. And as a result, on a Sunday morning in a church service, I was picking up a radio station very clearly. So, as you can tell, unbalanced connections can be a problem. Next, we're going to talk about different signal levels. So let's start with the very weakest signal level. That's the mic level. Mic level signals are just a tiny signal made by the moving of a microphone diagram. So they're extremely weak. And so they need a lot of amplification. That's why you'll always see mic level signals on a balanced connection. Well, I shouldn't say always. There are some, and please avoid them. But a mic level signal should always be a balanced connection because you're going to have to amplify it, and so you need a nice, quiet connection that doesn't pick up anything. Next, we're going to talk about line level signals. Now, there are a couple different types of line level. There's a consumer line level, which is a weaker signal, but works for things like DVD players and home amplifiers and that kind of thing. And there's a professional line level, which is a hotter signal, is used in professional gear, um, things like um, mixer inputs, for example. Um, amplifier inputs are going to be a professional line level input. So let's talk about instrument level signal. Instrument level signal can vary widely. And it's generally somewhere between mic level and line level, but sometimes can be outside of that even. And that's going to depend on your instrument, of course. Instruments that have an instrument level output are generally things like electric guitars, acoustic guitars, keyboards. Keyboards are going to be up towards the line level um, uh, side of things. And so there are even instrument level pickups that you can add to different instruments like violin, that kind of thing. And so that's important to know. Instrument level can be kind of all over the place. Headphone level. Now, a couple of years ago, you would have probably been laughed at for talking about this, but really this is a reality in today's world. More and more people are taking the headphone output of their device and plugging it in to some sort of an audio mixer, that kind of thing. And so it's something we need to talk about. Now, headphone level is all over the place, and that's because headphone level is variable, so you can turn the volume up and down on your headphones. Generally, and I say generally, most headphone level is just a little weaker than line level. Um, but some headphone device, some devices have a strong enough headphone amplifier that it can actually be louder than line level, uh, depending on what device you're talking about. So let's talk about connectors. Scary, huh? Well, let's start out with the XLR. So this is a balanced connection. There are three pins on an XLR connector for the plus, the minus, and the ground. So these are used a lot on microphones. Professional level microphones almost always have an XLR output. Now these are also used for line level, professional line level outputs. And so you'll have some pro level equipment 
that has XLR line level outs, and that's a balanced connection. Next, we're gonna talk about the quarter inch or phone jack. And um, this is a really versatile connection. It does a lot of things. So there are two types of this. There is a TS, which is a two conductor tip sleeve. That's what TS stands for. And then there's a TRS, tip ring sleeve. That's a three conductor connection. So let's talk about the TS. So the TS is used for an unbalanced um, line level connection. It can be used for an instrument level connection for guitars or keyboards, that kind of thing. It can be used as a speaker connection um, for power amplifiers and speakers. Now, I think it's important for me to take a minute here and mention that you should not interchange speaker and instrument cables. And the reason for this is that um, a speaker cable needs to be a much heavier gauge to properly uh, handle the current from a power amplifier. I think it's important for you to look. Now, you'll notice on the outside here, I have two pictures. The jacket will almost always tell you, the jacket of the cable, what kind of cable this is. So you notice here that this says it is an instrument cable. And this jacket says, for example, that it is a speaker cable. So that lets you know. Don't interchange them. The connectors are the same, so it will work, but it's not optimal. Now let's talk about TRS. Now there's some confusion about TRS because often it's thought of as a stereo headphone connector, and that is true. Um, it's used a lot on professional stereo headphones, and you'll have a left signal, a right signal, and a ground. However, uh, TRS can also be used as a balanced mic or line level connector. So you would have a mono signal on it and you have a plus minus ground on the three poles of the TRS connector. And that would be on a lot of mixer boards you'll find a TRS connection. And that's a balanced level. You can use it to input mics or whatever. In fact, let me show you this uh, cable that I have here. This is an XLR to TRS um, connection. And so that lets you uh, send a balanced signal mic or line level um, from the two different standards. So that's important to know. I want to take a minute here and talk about mini TS and mini TRS, and uh, sometimes called mini phone or 3.5 millimeter or eighth inch. Wow. Okay, so these are just a smaller version of the TS or the TRS connector. Now you do see some mono TS ones, not very many. And then they have a lot of times you'll see a, a unbalanced headphone connection on mini TRS. Now there are some pieces of equipment that will take a mic level signal on mini TRS. And this is why you'll see this cable. Now let me give you a word of caution about this cable. Do not use this cable to take a headphone output from your mobile device or your laptop and put it into a mic level input on a board. And the problem we will have with that is that the voltages are vastly different. And you're putting a double unbalanced signal into a single balanced connection, and that is not meant to be. So if you wanna hook up a smartphone or you wanna hook up a mobile device into an XLR connection, you need to use a transformer box. And you can watch my video about that um, it's smartphone and laptop interfaces. And that's the right way to do that with a proper transformer, summing both of the channels to mono so you don't lose any of the information. Next, we're gonna talk about RCA or phono connectors. And so these are called RCA or phono because they were of course invented by the RCA company and they were used originally to hook up phonographs to your radio as an accessory. And so RCA or phono is an unbalanced connection as it has a a uh, signal tip and then sort of a collar on the outside as the ground connection. And they're used a lot in home stereos and that kind of thing. A lot of times you'll see a, an eighth inch to uh, double RCA, eighth inch TRS to double RCA cable. And that is used to hook up a phone or a laptop or some other device with a headphone jack um, to a home stereo. And so that is a legitimate use because you're looking at a stereo unbalanced signal into two mono unbalanced outputs. So that is a cool uh, cable to have if you have a home stereo you wanna hook up uh, your laptop or your smartphone, etc. Now RCA, in addition to being unbalanced, is a consumer line level signal. So it's weaker than a professional line level signal, but that is generally what is put across on an RCA connection. 
Let's take a minute and talk about RCA to phone adapter plugs. Now these can work, and they do work, but one of their problems is that they're taking a consumer level uh, line signal and putting it into a pro level uh, line signal input. And so a lot of times you just won't be able to get the kind of volume you need um, if your mixer board is not meant to take a consumer line level input. A lot of mixer boards do have a consumer line level input uh, and so it's best to use that if you're using a device that is a consumer line level output. Let's talk about speak on connectors. Now the speak on is a twist lock speaker level connector invented by the Neutra company. And um, the cool thing about the speak on is that it twists in and it won't come back out again unless you unlatch it. And also the inter internals are set up with a screw type connection instead of a soldered connection. So that's a lot easier to work with when you're working on a speaker cable that's come apart. You can just put it back together with a screwdriver and a pair of wire strippers. Now this hasn't been a comprehensive video, but hopefully it's given you some good ideas and cleared up a few things in your mind so you know a little more about audio connectors, how they work, how they work together, or how they shouldn't work together. Thanks for watching.